So welcome. I want to talk about a topic that's not so nice sometimes, stuff that is not suitable for work. So how many of you remember chat roulette? And it turns out that according to Wikipedia, approximately one in eight feeds from chat roulette involves R-rated content. So it was pairing you off with someone randomly and you did see a lot of stuff you didn't want to see. So WebRTC still has the same problem and you need to think about WebRTC and not safe for work detection. And I did that using Yahoo's open NSFV, NSFW, sorry. <laughs> And it's a neural network for detection of pornographic images. It was open sourced by Yahoo a year ago, October 2016. It's available on GitHub in the Yahoo account. And it's a neural network, so it has been trained with a lot of images, input data, images labeled as either safe or not safe. And for some reason, that input data is not public. I don't know why. So the thing is taking an image as input and outputs a probability, a score between 0 and 1. So let's show some examples. Like Chris here is pretty good. So scores less than 0 0.2 typically means something that is reasonably safe with a high probability. And Chris, 0.5%, you're safe. I'll tell your manager. <laughs> So we can show, really show something that's scored with more than 0 0.8. That is an indication that the image is very highly probable not safe. And there's a lot of stuff in the middle, scores that are between 0 0.2 and 0 0.8. And I found this great image of David Hasler from Baywatch. And for some reason, it has a score of 0 0.38. And I mean, it's perfectly safe, I would say. And actually, it was quite interesting if I cut out a certain part of the picture like this, then the score drops to 0 0.04. So it's possible to understand what the neural network does to some degree, which is always a big problem in machine learning and in the AI. So show me the code. It's a Python script. So you run it, Python classify NSFW. You give it a pre-trained model and an input image, and it outputs a score, in this case, 0 0.14. And it's a Python script. You can run it easily. The input image is resized to 256 times 256 pixels. It takes about 0 0.8 seconds to run, including the Python startup, and about 280 megabytes of memory. And as I said, it returns a numerical score. So, how can you hook it up with WebRTC? Well, you need two things for that. The first thing in your architecture is a web service for uploading images and classifying them. And then you need some client-side code for capturing an image from the video stream. So I'm going to show that. The web service part is pretty easy. If you write it in Node.js, it's 10, 12 lines. You require a bunch of packages. You create a HTTP server. If the request URL matches a certain thing, you classify things. Otherwise, you serve an index HTML. And in this case that you want to classify, you just spawn a Python process. And that spawns Python, returns a result, which you serve in the request, and then you delete the file, or you get a lot of images. The get user media stuff is pretty standard these days. You just call Navigator Media Devices Get User Media, request video in this case, attach the stream to a video element, then grab the frame. That is simple as well. So it takes a local video, you create a canvas, set the canvas dimensions, and get a context and draw the image. And then you upload it to a server. And that is reasonably small if you only grab a small image that's very small, 20 kilobytes on average. So it, uploading it won't affect your RTC bandwidth estimate. And then you upload it with XML HTTP request, get a result back, and display it. 
So it's not hard to build, really. The code I've shown fits into five slides. But how do you test it? And Chad said, we're all looking forward to see how you're going to demo this in front of the room without violating Google's policies. <laughs> so I asked Sahi for help. <laughs> so let's see, 0.16. Uh, uh, you can go higher. Yeah, that's not good. That's still, that's still, yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> Let me try. Yes. <laughs> Almost. Uh, that's still too safe. Let me try something. So what score do I get? Mm, that worked best yesterday. So uh, what I tried was basically holding my hands like this before my eyes, which suggests that they have trained the classifier with eyes cut out. And that was quite interesting. Didn't expect that. So it works great most of the time, unless you want to demo it. But how do you actually use it? So does it scale for real time? And we've seen it takes one second processing time per image and 250 megabytes of memory. And in production, you would use fast CGI to avoid the overhead of spawning Python process. And if you say you capture from only every 30 seconds, that means you need one server per 30 to 50 clients. It's possible, but it's pretty expensive. So, and I mean, just because you can secretly, without telling the user, grab a snapshot out of the local video, that doesn't mean you should do it, because at least for me, that would totally violate my viol my expectation of privacy on any service I use. So typically, I looked what is covered by our terms of service, and they say voice and video communicated in a room is not stored anywhere in our system. So no, we cannot do that for legal reasons, which is pretty good in my opinion. So there are some things that may be covered. And for us, it turned out to be classification of images that we store in our databases, like user avatars or room background images. And on Appearing, we allow users that are registered to upload an avatar, either from a webcam, taking a snapshot, or from an image. And I ran the classification on that. It was several hundred thousand pictures. And this is a histogram showing the number of images for each score. So what we see here on the left is that there's a very high amount of pictures that are perfectly safe, that are green. There's a very small amount of pictures that are in this yellow range. And there is this very small bump here. And if we switch to a logarithmic scale, it gets a bit more visible. So we have a small amount of images which are definitely not safe. And the same happens for background pictures. We allow users to upload a background image. The distribution looks somewhat similar. It's a bit more, it falls off a bit steeper. So most pictures are really, really safe. And again, we have this bump here on the right side where a lot of stuff is not safe. I didn't really want to take a look <laughs> because, no, I don't get paid enough for that. So we send out a couple of Hadebra emails saying goodbye, you've reached our terms of service, we don't want you anymore. So, and what was interesting was that the percentage of images was consistent with other methods we used to deal with those users, like referrer block lists are a pretty standard way to do it, or profanity filters. So if the room name looks fishy, the background image is most likely not going to be good either. So as a summary, this Yahoo stuff provides a very good way to do a reliable detection of content that is not safe. Combining it with WebRTC for demo is pretty easy. And the difficult part really is when to use it. And for us, it showed that it was not really feasible to do it in real time for client-side processing. So we used it for classification of other images in the system, which were avatar and background images. And that basically augments any other methods we use, like block lists. So thank you very much.